You are what you eat. And most people are following a standard American diet, which means they are eating the lowest quality, practically poisonous foods possible. The body can only detox so quickly. When our bodies are bombarded with these foods as the majority of our diet, it becomes very difficult to not be sick, let alone stay healthy. And I mean, you don't have to explain to people how unhealthy Americans are. Everyone knows how unhealthy Americans are. Today, we're going to touch on which of these foods are the worst and why. Although most of you are following a high quality organic diet with plenty of animal protein, this may help you dictate where you can deviate from your diet time to time. You know, you go out to a restaurant, you go out to a fast food place. That means, hey, maybe don't have fries every week or something of the sort. At number one, we have vegetable seed oils. And arguably, if these did not exist, I mean, people would probably be healthy. If we just removed the vegetable seed oils from the standard American diet, canola, sunflower, and soybean, you know, people don't read labels. And I remember when I was a kid, my grandmother and mom had a huge jug of Wesson oil, which is soybean oil that they always used to fry chicken cutlets in. Very, very, very bad for you. It's the root cause of many diseases because of the unnatural fat ratio. We are meant to eat predominantly saturated fat. You know, our fat stores are supposed to be saturated fats with some unsaturated fats. Those saturated fats being mostly meat and dairy with unsaturated fats being pretty much anything that is liquid. So having a base of animal foods in the diet for that saturated fat is ideal. And then you can have unsaturated fats here and there as long as the omega ratios are in check or it's not oxidized like a handful of nuts or something. But these vegetable seed oils are the opposite of that. They are heavily oxidized and their ratios are completely out of whack. So much omega-6. And when they're laced in just about every single food on the shelf, when you consume a lot of them frequently for many, many years, your body's fat stores become unsaturated. You know, one of my viewers mentioned on a video that the cellulite is basically people that have too many unsaturated fat stores. If they had saturated fat in their body instead, they would not have cellulite. The problem is the body does not recognize vegetable oils as natural. It pretty much attacks them, causes massive inflammation in all tissues in the body that most Americans have as a result of the high vegetable seed oil content of the standard American diet. And you know, these oils are abundant, they're cheap, and they're profitable. And guys, I've done so many videos in depth on the vegetable seed oil, so if you want to understand the scientific components of that, you can just search my YouTube channel, you know, how they actually cause heart disease. Number two is sugary junk foods, more specifically candy bars, certain sodas, cakes, and cookies. Pure sugar itself isn't actually that bad for us. It depends on the chemicals and other components of the food. Now, sugar on its own in large enough amounts you know, in a stressed person does cause issues in certain metabolic pathways. It can deplete vitamins. The body will use up B vitamins, vitamin C, certain minerals to process that sugar into energy. The unnatural sweeteners, whether it's like high fructose corn syrup or maltose or something in these junk foods are not as easy to process as an organic natural sugar. Plus, the chemicals in these foods, whether it's what they sprayed on the crops or the preservatives they added, inhibit organ function to the point of further nutrient depletion. On top of that, these sugary junk foods tend to contain vegetable seed oils as well and so many other additives that our body considers toxins. And guys, there's pretty significant discrepancies. You know, having a glass bottled Coca-Cola once in a while, it's not that bad but having a Twix bar or a Snickers bar really depends on the, the specific food, you know, how much other crap is in there. So next up is fortified wheat products, some breads and most cereals, uh, even high quality organic stuff at a health food store, unfortunately does have some type of fortification and negatives added to it. You know, even just a non-organic baguette isn't that bad for you. Granted, the only ingredient is flour. Problem is these synthetic vitamins they're adding are harmful, they're in unnatural ratios and basically poisons that our body doesn't need. You know, if you don't need a vitamin, 
then it's just adding something extra. You know, it's not necessarily a good thing. Oh, we all need more vitamins. You probably don't. You might be deficient in a few of them, but just taking them in general is not always a good thing. And one of the worst is the iron fortification. They put literal iron filings in flowers and being a heavy metal, very, very stressful on the liver. Then you have the agrochemical content. You know, what did they spray on these crops? Glyphosate, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides. The GMO stuff isn't nearly as big of a deal as all the crap they are spraying on it, Roundup. So it's a really horrible combination of negatives that overwhelm our body's detoxing abilities. And these first three, seed oils, sugar, and wheat, manifest themselves in a majority of standard American diet foods. Each of them are full of chemicals, highly inflammatory, engineered to taste okay, but the reason is they are highly profitable. So people get addicted and these companies have very high margins. So for the next two, we're gonna talk about some animal products, starting with feedlot chicken and pork. Beef not nearly being as bad. You know, think of chicken wings, eggs, bacon, and this ties back to the fatty acid ratios in our body. You're essentially poisoning yourself the same way as a vegetable seed oil because that's what's in the animal feed, vegetable seeds, soybeans. Differences typically aren't as oxidized and therefore somewhat less inflammatory. You know, it's not gonna kill you and give you heart disease, it's just gonna make you sick. Thing is, when you eat animal protein, regardless of how low quality it is, you are getting B vitamins and animal nutrients, you know, those lowest quality, crappy white supermarket chicken and eggs still has saturated fat, cholesterol, things your body needs. Yeah, there's the agrochemical concern that was in the feed that the animals are eating, all the antibiotics or crap they're getting, estrogen concern from herbicides like atrazine, but at least the body has some nutrients to deal with the oxidative damage from the negatives. You know, if someone ate just regular white rice and chicken every day, yeah, they'd be healthier than a normal person. They probably have some deficiencies here and there, but you know, by no means are they going to have really, really horrible diseases early on in their life. So for number five, we have supermarket dairy. I guess mainly the milk, some of the other products aren't as bad, like the butter and the cream, if they don't add too much stuff to it. It's okay, it's passable, but the milks and the yogurts are generally very, very bad. Highly processed, estrogenic, fortified vitamins. Not as bad as the meat, because it's still saturated fat. They do you know, run that dairy through high heat pasteurization and then homogenization, which you know, makes the fat particles disperse and more inflammatory. Plus, the original dairy from that farm was not from healthy cows. It was not that great in the first place because of what they're feeding animals in the feedlots. And it's not that it's grain fed, it's that it's low quality agrochemical sprayed grains and different chemicals and steroids and stuff they're feeding to the cattle. Again, those same estrogen concerns that occur in all conventional supermarket and animal products, but in some milks, and actually most milks I've seen in the supermarket, they add synthetic vitamins to try to damage us even further. Usually vitamin A palmitate and vitamin D2, which the body doesn't really need, you know? You're not gonna have a vitamin A deficiency, and even so, the palmitate has to be, it's just, it's just really, really bad stuff. It's really bad stuff. So, yeah, I mean, this is really, the majority of calories that people are eating in their diets can kind of be named from one of these, unless people are sticking to whole foods, which is not that convenient and requires cooking, which most people don't do. So uh, hopefully this is a nice little overview for you guys. As we mentioned earlier, you can kind of search my channel for each of these things individually where we have spoken about them in depth because I have done videos on each one of these individually. So if you search vegetable seed oils, if you search Frank Tofano sugar, if you search Frank Tofano gluten intolerance, I've spoken so much on meat and dairy as well. So just take a look through my YouTube channel, guys. But outside of that, you can go to frank-tofano.com where you will see all of my businesses too, which you can support me in you know, providing you guys with high quality animal products because I guess I have nothing else to do with my life at this point. But as always, guys, please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe so that YouTube, well, you know, let's be positive today. Subscribe and click that notification bell so we can creep above 100,000 after being on YouTube for God knows how many years. And uh, I really got to go to the tailor because 
I have so many pants and shirts I need to get adjusted. So we've been wearing this for like the past two months, which I don't like doing. I like being professional.